Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, whatever time it is that you're watching. Thank you guys for joining me. I'm Tish Ross, and this is No Judgment Here with Tish Ross, the podcast. I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Um, tonight, you're in for a special treat. We have a guest. His name is Moses, and um, or you could also pronounce his name Moises. It's M-O-I-S-E-S. -S. It's very unique. I love that name. Um, but he is actually... Um, soon to be, if he's not already, and I'm sure he'll let us know, but a published author. So um, I'll let him share a little bit about that with you guys. And um, you're in for a really great treat and a wonderful testimony. So without further ado, I'm going to bring Moses in. Okay. All it right. Is. Welcome. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. And I appreciate you. Thank you very much for having me on and sharing my story with your audience. And you're correct. I'm a soon-to-be author. Uh, yes. With Elena, our dear friend, our dear mutual friend, doing the King's version of her Surrender to Rise series. Yes. Congratulations. It's so amazing. I cannot you, wait you, to get my you. hands on the King's version of Surrender to Rise. It was um, sort of cathartic whenever I uh, was able to go back and write a chapter, and um, which sort of... Sort of um, pointed me in the direction of maybe I need to write a full a, a book about all the things because mm. um, while a chapter is great, um, you're able, you know, it, it holds your attention. You're able to kind of get to the nitty gritty, but there's so many details that uh, go along with the testimony, um, as I'm sure yep. that you probably know. So, um, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell us about yourself. Um who you are, you're married, what you do for a living, and um, have any kids or plan to have kids, all that good stuff. Well, that that's my favorite subject is talking about my family. Mm. <laughs> Not so much about me, but about my family. Um, yes, I'm happily married, have been together with my wife il yeah, 11 years, over 11 years, going to 12. Uh, we have four beautiful children in those 12 years. So we were busy <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's been an amazing journey. Um, I do have a daytime job uh, outside of that, that I do help a lot of men. Uh, one thing that I've seen in myself, of course, I've dealt with it myself personally, but also just everywhere in social media, just personally with friends, coworkers, everywhere, men str struggling, just mentally, emotionally, physically, sometimes even spiritually. And because I struggled with it, and I like to think that I, in a way, found my way out of those things with some guidance. Um, I think that's something that men are looking for, but the right resources are lacking, for lack of mm. a better term. And that's what motivated me to not only do the book, but also start my business, Mentally Strong Men, um, because that's important. Um, I've gotten a lot of compliments over this shirt, which is great. <laughs> Oh, I love, um, oh my goodness. I can't wait yeah. to hear about your, your business. That is so amazing. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a blessing. It's been a calling. It's, it's not a thing where uh, I dreamt up as a kid, like oh, I'm going to help men with their mental health growing up. <laughs> wow. Um, it, it was a calling. Um, yeah. And I'm sure that we'll get into my testimony as to why I got led mm -hmm. to that point. Um, but yeah, it's been a beautiful journey. Interesting one because now we're dealing with business and stuff, but beautiful journey nonetheless, help being able to help men. Um, Most definitely. Yeah, just live the lives, become the men they were created to be. Absolutely. I love that. And, um, you know, there are so many things, I think even as a mother, and then I, I so want to hear your testimony, but as a mother, you know, the good Lord is just, uh, as you know, and um, is is so, so good. And yep. so present in times of trials and tribulations, even though during the midst of them, um, some of us, maybe all of us, maybe most of us wonder, where are you, Lord? But uh, mm. I know from mm. my own personal testimony that as much as maybe I questioned or wondered, why is this happening to me, God? He's still at the same time and during those those the the trials i could still hear some whispers um do not tell your children and this is in in the book surrender to rise the women's version do not tell your children mm. what 
their father did because it's going to change the trajectory of their lives. And I need to be the one that creates and guides them to be the men and the women that I created them to be, not what someone else's sin created them or would like to try to destroy. So I understand that so much that uh, with your business that you want to be able to to pour into people and guide them to be the men that God created them to be. I love that, Moses. So I'm going to let you take it away and just kind of tell us a little bit about um, your story, uh, what you kind of went through, and uh, your journey and your testimony. Yeah, well, you are in for a treat because um, I'm used to telling, in a way, my story, right, where I came from and how I grew up and how that affected me growing up in, in different ways. Mm-hmm. Um, but right now, personally, and your your audience is kind of in a treat. <laughs> this is the first time mm-hmm. I'm ever speaking about this uh, to anybody, especially in a podcast. Um, so going backtracking to kind of like where I grew up, right, or where I yes. came from. Um, Really, my story where it began or like the moment where unbeknownst to me, my life sort of changed, took a full 180, uh, was when I was four years old. Um, At the time, I had two loving parents, uh, an older sister, an older brother, and a younger brother as well. And all of a sudden, when I was four, barely getting some memory, barely starting to form memories like those... In the movie Inside Out, I have kids, so I'm going to reference a lot of kids' movies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the movie Inside Out, um, they call them core memories. One of my one of my earliest core memories, one of my earliest memories was uh, seeing my dad for the last time. And I remember vividly how it was. It was my parents arguing outside of our apartment. We lived in a very, I don't want to say the um, the dangerous parts of the city but on the outskirts where you can still Mm -hmm. feel the influence (laughs) Mm -hmm. not too not too high-end kind of thing um and i remember seeing my dad i hadn't seen him for a while for a long time and i remember seeing him like oh that's dad i ran outside i went to go hug him my mom told me like hey get back over here i had to listen to my mom uh quickly my dad asked me for a glass of water my mom said that was fine went back inside grabbed that glass of water for my dad came back outside, gave it to him. Mom told me to, hey, go back inside. I did, and that was the last time that I ever saw my dad. And at the time, you're a kid, right? You don't know what's going on. All all you care about is have fun, let's play, and all these things. Uh, But it took some time for kind of that. That that was a moment where, as as kind of an analogy, a seed of of a dangerous or poisonous weed got planted. And over time, it started to grow. It started to kind of bloom and to and weave itself into other areas of my life. Mm-hmm. And um, to me, because I didn't know what, what what really went on, I didn't know the story behind my mom and, and dad separating to the full extent of things. Mm-hmm. Um, to me, it was just, you know what? Well, that's not here. Um, and I can either just continue going or um, I can let this drift me away in some sort of way. So I grew up in the facade that, uh, hey, my, my dad leaving or my parents getting divorced didn't really affect me. Mm. So I grew up with that facade of thinking like, you know what, my dad just left, but didn't do really much to me. And what reinforced that thought is the fact that even to this day, I'm still married. Uh, my four kids still have me in their life. So because of the external, I guess, evidence, my dad leaving or me growing, growing up without a dad didn't really affect me. Mm. Um, it wasn't until um, years later. I was an adult already. We already had our kids. I was in the happy, happiest place on earth about three years ago um, in 2021. But I was the most miserable person there <laughs> at the time. Because mm. um, really, I was going through a depressed state. I was being stressed over jobs. Um, stressed over being a good dad, uh, being mm-hmm. a good husband, and feeling like I'm failing at every single aspect in my life. Um, I was at a worse shape at the time. Uh, so many things happened to to that, I guess, rock bottom moment for me to get to that point. Um, and that forced me to really look into my life because 
that was after many, many cycles of going through depressed states, anxiety, and all these things years prior, even a porn addiction that I developed. Um, and that moment, I was just, you know what, something has to give. Why is this something that continues to happen to me? So that's when I had I took the time to backtrack and God really led me through this journey, um, through the journey of, you know what, that moment for when you were four years old of your dad leaving, that really impacted you at a very deep level. And that's, that's uh, can, can the I story that I kind of, uh, yeah. So I have to tell you this. Uh, I, I really need to connect you with my son, Tristan. Um, mm. because so, um, he was six, I think, or seven when his father chose to do what he chose to do, um, mm -hmm. went to prison for it. And then when he was out of prison, his father chose to not participate in their, in, in the children's lives. And, mm -hmm. um, he had the opportunity, the doors wide open. He scheduled uh, a couple of visits with my son and then something would come up and wouldn't happen. So hmm. just this year or the year before Moses, he, uh, my son Tristan decided, um, I, I can't do this anymore. Like it's affecting me. Um, and so he reached out to his dad and he said, dad, I need to uh, put a halt on our relationship. They didn't have one put a halt on this because mm. it's hurting me more than it's helping me. So mm. um, he didn't end the relationship. He said, I need to put a halt on the relationship. But I have to tell you that my son through the years growing up, you know, I, I was a single mom, just me and my two kids. And I would constantly check in with them on the daily. You know, how are you doing? You know, tell me how you're feeling. Um, if you're sad, it's okay. If you're mad, it's okay. If you don't know how you feel, it's okay. But I'm here and let's let's talk about yeah. it. And he, like it didn't affect him, just like you at mm. all. He is now, um, he's 29, but he is a year, almost a year clean of his porn addiction. Um, mm, and he discusses nice. it. I'm not saying something that he's not said socially on social platforms because he is a um, he's a, a a pastor, youth pastor now. He has a year lacking in his uh, to get his college degree, but financially can't do it right now. But um, he fought that addiction for a long time, long time, and he's yep. finally, thank God free of that. And I wonder now that, and all this circle around back to you to say, I wonder is, is all that because of his, his dad walked away his dad. I mean, and, and he hasn't, I think there's some deep hidden hurt, but he's doing a, a 12 step program with his church or with the church mm -hmm. um, called, um, Oh gosh, re not re-engage, but it's re, uh, Regener regenerate or sorry, I can't think of the name, but he is going and they're starting to do this 12 step um, program where um, I think it's the same one where um, addicts use um, it's a 12 step program and I can't remember, but um, mm -hmm. I see the Lord transforming him. But I wonder, or my question for you is, do you feel like the, the um, porn addiction and the, feeling or I guess not knowing how to feel as a kid. I mean, how do you know how to feel that doesn't start to exactly. really formulate until yeah. you or affect you until you're older? Do you think is that kind of what happened to you? Yeah, definitely. Um, for me, pornography was a coping mechanism mm -hmm. um, that derived from curiosity. Really, it started very innocently. It wasn't like I need to I'm depressed. I need to cope with something. It was just out of curiosity, just like mm -hmm. a kid touches touches a hot stove <laughs> it's out of curiosity yeah. like oh what is that flaming thing yeah initially right if that kid continues to put his hand on that hot stove knowing that it's going to burn now it's something different <laughs> yes <laughs> now there's a yes. bigger issue in there um so yeah it started very innocently um young gauge access to a computer really because i had an older brother who was about nine years older than me um, so he dealt with his own things. Um, so I accidentally bumped into those things, uh, mm. again, innocently, mm. but now that that 
seed was planted at that time once i grew up through the hormonal changes through puberty really um those those emotions that anger that i was holding on to that i didn't know for so long Mm -hmm. uh, started displaying itself through pornography and that's what i saw it kind of like relief for um so and i'm sorry i didn't want to interrupt you but let's go back because you said you were at the um worst weight uh, you were yeah. at the best time of your life, but also in the worst place of your life. And I'm sorry, I know I interrupted, but um, so you decided or you felt that it was time to do some some um, self-examination to kind of move. Um, you started realizing that you were depressed, you were angry, um, you were in the worst shape of your life, but you also felt sort of good. And so then what steps, what did you do next? I really, the only thing that I knew at the time, uh, because it was kind of a year after COVID. So things were starting to open up. So that's where we were able to go to the happiest place on earth, still with a mask though. Uh, Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it was still that open. Um, So I couldn't go to like my friend's house and you know what, let's talk it out or go to a therapist and talk with them. And Nowadays, it's very hard to find the person, (laughs) to find a person who is able to understand you and guide you and all those things. Um, So that's that's why I go back to God really kind of pulled me and carried me through all that whole journey. Um, Because all I really did was the same things that I had been doing for years prior, which is uh, listen to podcasts, read books. And that's pretty much it. Um, And the thing that I started adding to it is meditation. And in meditation, that's where God really, I see it as a form of prayer, really. It's just you quieting your mind and letting God in. Um, And God really led me through that whole journey. He led me through the podcast to listen to, the books to read, and little nuggets from all those things started coming into into my ears, into my brain, seeing and reading all those things. That started kind of me being curious about myself, like, oh, this person went through that. What if what I went through had this effect on me. Mm. And it was like going down that little that little rabbit hole on covering the layers of the onion per se and getting to the center. And yeah, when I got to the center, I found that little hurt little boy still hurt, hurting over dad being gone. And this is where kind of like the exclusive part comes into play that I've never mentioned because I again when I went through that journey, I made peace with the fact that I may not ever see my dad again. I mean, I hear from him. I don't know if he's dead or alive at the time. Um, over this past weekend, I heard or I got notified and I got they told me that my father passed away. And he passed away last week. I'm so and sorry. In a, yeah, it was it was I didn't expect it. It was very unexpected. Like I mentioned, I made peace with the fact that I may not know ever. So knowing it was kind of um, there was still pain. I, I cried about it and mm. it it. It was my brain couldn't comprehend like how can i Mm -hmm. cry over someone that i didn't really know per se Mm -hmm. but at the same time he was still dad that that's still my dad he was there he he's my dad he's biologically my father um and through through this moment right now even at the time i'm still mourning literally this morning i had to you know what i had to go back to what what i did before which is meditate take some time alone just god and myself and my dad right with the consciousness of like hey you know what let's let's take some time and i was allow allowing myself to cry and mourn and and really pray for peace on my father's end for his soul yes. uh because now that he's passed away my siblings are telling me stories of how he really lived seeing how he lived this whole time since it's my parents' separation and just being shocked over the fact of how he lived and what he did and the reason, the real reason why my parents divorced. So as you can imagine, an influx of emotions, uh, that little boy that was four uh, came back again because now at the time dad was gone and never coming back, but now dad is gone, gone. He's really never coming back. Yes. Um, so I was able to hold him and create space for him and and let him out so that he can mourn his dad because at the end of the day i did know my dad i know that i have a few memories with him that were happy and i appreciate those memories um but yeah i mean losing a dad whether he was part of your life or not it's 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 not easy 
and it was yeah. something that I never expected. Um, so I'm mm -hmm. grateful that I was able to have prior practice and know what to do in these in these situations uh, that are mentally and emotionally hard uh, for yes. me to kind of go through it without not letting it affect me. Because if it did, I wouldn't be doing this podcast right now. Yes, <laughs> yes. And, and I'm so sorry. Uh, gosh, I, I'm honored and grateful that you uh, came on and um, sharing such uh, with such vulnerable vulnerability and transparency and real emotion um in real time you know gosh just just this past weekend um i wonder um uh, you know in that little boy's mind and it's you never know i'm so glad that you're sharing your story because i wonder about my son i wonder mm. what what might happen? I, I don't know. I, I I don't know. Um, but I know from my own experience with my dad, who, like I said, he was he was a raging, um, uh, physically abusive, uh, mentally abusive man, whom I love dearly, and who's gone to be with the Lord. I know that for sure. Um, but at the time, um, you know, I was scared to death and just wanted to be a perfect kid so I didn't get hit or in trouble. And also so I could feel be loved, I think, I thought. Um, but uh, there was a time when he called when we were adults after our mom passed away and he told all of us that he didn't want to see us anymore because we reminded uh, him too much of our mom. And the Lord mm. just said, respect the way that he's grieving, respect the way that he's grieving. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to, not that he, not that the Lord didn't say that um, it's not going to hurt, you know, but I um, yep. said, just, just let your dad grieve, just let him be. So I was like, okay. So I um, respected the way that my dad was grieving and um, asked God to help me through my pain. And because uh, I really don't think my dad would even would have is, was equipped to, to help me through my pain. Um, but there was a time when he called and I didn't answer the phone. And so I, and I share this with everybody that I speak with now who might have a grievance against anybody, someone, your mom, your dad, a kid, pick up the phone and call because I had to go to major counseling because when the phone rang and I saw it was my dad, I thought, what does he want? Like I was afraid still, mm -hmm. even as an older adult uh, in my thirties, late thirties, early forties, I thought, I don't want to talk to him. You know, what's he going to say? Is he drunk or, you know, I didn't answer the phone. And that was my last opportunity to ever mm -hmm. have had a conversation with my dad. And I regret it to the day that I did not answer that phone. Um, it was, uh, I guess, about a month or so later that, May, June, July, yeah, a um, month and a half later that he died of a massive heart attack and at a, at a, uh, in the parking lot of a Cracker Barrel. And um, mm. I had to go to major therapy for that. Um, spoke with a Christian counselor and said, I live with great regret because of my own selfishness, my own everything, stupidity, selfishness, anger that I had not dealt with before. I decided, mm. I'll show you. I'm not going to answer the phone. And it backfired, you know. So, um, I thank you for sharing because I know, Moses, that, you know, I know that your story is going to help somebody. And I know for sure one person it's going to help. And I know that's my son. Because mm. in a world where sometimes you go through things um, as a son or a daughter, you go through things sometimes and you feel like, man, I'm all alone and nobody has ever been through this before. Or do other people react this way or not react or feel or not feel. And when they, when someone shares their testimony, um, vulnerability is so important. It's so beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. It's a hard thing. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Someone somewhere is, needs to hear it. So, so you, um, as your your dad has passed, and again, I'm so sorry to mm -hmm. you and your family. Um, prior to 
his passing, just kind of going back um, and dealing with some of the the things that you dealt with. Uh, were you, did you deal with uh, anger and um, your spouse? How how did your spouse handle all of that? Is that a good okay question to, to ask? Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, it definitely affected our relationship. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, luckily, it was she was at the tail end of things. Um, to kind of give context to that story, while I was growing up as a teenager, not having a dad around to like kind of check me kind of like, hey, you don't talk to your mom that way. You don't do that. Um, you don't punch the wall. <laughs> That's something that I that I did. Um, it really led me down to, to the angle is really because um, I kept asking myself, why are the men who are supposed to love me not loving me? Like mm-hmm. I mentioned, I grew up with an older brother um, who also lost his, his father. Again, the same father that we had, they were, uh, we, we were raised by. Um, and of course, I mean, be, me being a younger kid, I have no idea. <laughs> I have right. no idea why he's not, he's not loving me or, or things like that. All I can do is blame myself. Like, what did I do? Am I not lovable? Um, and that backtracked to my dad as well. Like, did my dad leave because I, he doesn't love me? If he was dealing with something, did he not love me enough to kind of deal with the stuff so that he can be there as a father for me? Mm-hmm. Uh, same question with my brother as well. And it got to a point where my brother was starting to show some love that that love that my younger brother and I have desired from the men that are supposed to love us, right, to lead us and guide us. And but it turned a dark, a dark it turned dark after that, unfortunately. And it for me, it boiled up to a point now being 15, 16 years old at the time, um, seeing kind of the same thing happening again now between my older brother and my mom of them mm. fighting and things like that. Um, as a 15, 16 year old, I was like, you know what, if you don't like it here, you can leave the house. Mm-hmm. And that was a pivotal moment for me. Cause at that point, in a way I became the man of the house. <laughs> um, yeah. cause now I was 15, 16, uh, my older brother left the house to go, go do his thing. Um, and it was up to me to kind of be the protector of my mother at the time now. Um, and I feel like that kind of helped me be the be the husband that I am now, be the protector and provider for my family as well. Um, and I tell my now that I have a son um, who who I'm a stepfather to, but uh, obviously I consider him my own. Yes. Um, I tell him like, hey, dude, like the the man who have tried that with with the women, no, <laughs> they don't right. they don't last, they don't make it. Um, so again being that father figure that I needed to kind of check me and be like, you, no, you don't do that here. That, does, that doesn't that does happen. You respect the women that are raising you, that are doing everything for you. And now being able to kind of uh, move past that, that anger again, I was really able to figure out where it came from. And that's where it came from. It's the fact that I wanted to feel loved by my father, by my older brother, by men who I wanted to be led by. Because it transferred over to to friends, it transferred over to to my managers, to my bosses at work, and things like that. Like, I want your approval, I want your love, I will do anything for your love. I became mm. a yes man to those to those people, mm. um, all because I wanted that a man's love in my life. Because yeah. I never knew what it felt like really. Um, and it, again, it boiled down to another disappointment of a mentor of mine who was supposed to lead me kind of drift me away to a place that I didn't want to be at. Um, and once I became, I, I came, I became quote unquote, a man of myself and not just a yes man. I started, right. started standing up for myself and questioning things. That's where it kind of like, you know what? I don't like you becoming a man now. So let's go ahead and drift apart. <laughs> Naturally that happens. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, now that I became into, I came into my own. Now I kind of know with the guidance of God, that like, hey, you don't need to seek approval from men anymore. Mm. I love you. Your heavenly mm. father loves you. Seek his approval. Seek his favor. And everything else will be fine. And it was beautiful being able to to kind of realize, like, I had a father this whole time. It was my heavenly father. And even though he he did bless me with the time that I had with my father, um, maybe the trajectory that he decided to take was one that was necessary for me to come to to, to this point in my life. 
so yes. that it's not repeated for future generations. Yes, that is so true. Let me ask you this: What do you think? There, what could, what would be some advice to give somebody who is, man, it's just so hard when you're young. It is so hard when you're young, but in 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 maybe teenage terms, I guess mm -hmm. that maybe this wasn't. And I think about my son, and and he's twenty nine, but I think about my son. It's hard to think, okay, well, maybe this wasn't the trajectory that um, the Lord had for my life. And so that's why he uh, removed my father, removed my mother or, or what out of my life. What do you do with the pain? I mean, you know, I, I remember my, my brother, my son's uncle who taught him how to shave. And, you know, I'm a woman and I, I would YouTube things and try to have conversations, but I'm not a man and I'm not the biological father. And like you said, it, it, I, I understand now why there are children who are abused or children who, uh, as parents are addicts, they want their mom, they want their dad. It doesn't matter if you're abusive. It doesn't matter if, you know, they want mm. their biological mom or biological dad. Yeah. What do you say to someone who who thinks, you know what, maybe this is maybe this is uh, not the trajectory of my life, and that's why my mom or my dad was removed from my my life. Man, what do I do with this pain? What kind of advice could mm. you give to someone who's like dealing with unknown feelings and emotions? Because not having your parent is huge. What yeah. do you do with that pain? Who do you go to? For me, the person I really, he came to me was God, <laughs> really. Um, and he's the one that kind of put these words and, and, and thoughts into into my head. Um, essentially, what I did with the pain of growing up without a dad, productively now, right? Back then, it was very just not managed at all. I came out in right. anger, frustration, mm -hmm. stress, again, depression, anxiety, all those things. Um, now that I that I was able to work through it, uh, one thing that really helped me, of course, forgiveness. And I know that sounds cliche, but it's very important. It's yes. it's forgiveness. Not forgiveness is not for for my father. It was for me. Mm -hmm. uh, whether it brought peace to my father or not spiritually, um, I have no idea. I won't know until if luckily we're able to meet in in the heavenly gates. Um, but it was for me definitely. It was able to forgive him, and a huge thing. And this is very hard to do. And it was very hard for me to do. And it's something that is continuous. You have to do it as much as possible, as much as you need, really, which is love them for the for the person that they are, mm -hmm. with their flaws, with, with the good stuff and the bad stuff. It's just love them for who they are. Um, mm -hmm. Because one thing that really, really destroyed, I, I guess, in a way, um, my, my mental image of like, or the questions that I had, like, why, why didn't he do, why did dad not do this? Why did dad not be a better man? Uh, mm. Why did dad, why was dad not there? Why, why was this happening to me? Right. Why did dad do this to me? Why does, does he not love me? All those questions underneath, if we scrap all the emotion stuff and we just look at it bare bones, there were expectations that unfortunately my, my father, no matter what he tried or didn't try to do, couldn't meet. Because they were my expectations that I was putting up upon him. So once I let go, like, okay, well, like I mentioned before, uh, my father's not might not look for me. So let's go ahead and give rid of that expectation that he will. You know what? My kids are not going to have a grandpa to see, mm. um, no matter how much I want it. So let's go ahead and grieve that expectation. That's the right word. Not let go, but grieve it. Mourn it okay. that, hey, maybe that won't happen. Um, hey, I'm never going to get to know whether my I have other brothers or sisters from my dad's side that maybe he had with another family or build another family. Let's go ahead and grieve that part as well. Mm. Um, so being able to all those things that I was holding on to, right, all those wants that I wanted from my father or even my brother or just the men around me that I wanted from them, grieve it, grieve those mm. expectations that they were not met. So that they don't they don't hold me back uh, from having other future relationships. Because uh, one beautiful relationship that I was able to build, uh, despite all the bad relationships that I've had with men, is with my father-in-law. My father-in-law is like a second dad to me. 
even though I met him well into my adulthood. <laughs> um, but his relationship with me, it, it's it's beautiful. I love it. Mm -hmm. It's something that I, I appreciate it, right? I know the distinction between not having a father figure and now having one that genuinely loves me, um, even though I stole his daughter from him. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, 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 it's beautiful. It's a beautiful journey. It's, it is very hard to do. And like I mentioned, it's something that it's ongoing. It's continuous. It's not like I never have those moments of like, why did dad never do this to me? If dad was here and taught me this. I wouldn't have to be struggling through this right now. Um, so again, it's grieving those things again and again, forgiving as time goes on as much as possible. Um, that reminds me, I don't know if you've seen the movie, The Shack. Um, that's a very powerful, powerful movie. I cried so many times. Uh, the most powerful <laughs> one where, where God, God himself turns into a man and tells the, 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 the lead in the movie, um, yeah, in this part, a man needs to lead you. Mm. Um, and that was a part where he had to, like, you know what, confront the fact that your daughter is gone. And not only that, but you need to forgive the guy who did that to your daughter. Yes. Um, and he tells him, ah, but I, I don't think I can forgive him. I, I, I don't know how many times I'm going to have to forgive him. And God tells him as many as it takes. Yes. So that's yes. how I view it is as many as it takes. If it's my entire life, well, then so be it. Cause that's, it, I'd rather do that instead of sit and, and sit in this bubble of depression and anxiety and mm -hmm. let that affect my family. Um, like God says, carry your cross and follow me. I have to carry my cross. I can't just drop it down and then have my kids drag it on the back of their cross and things like that. So yes. because of that is, that's my cross to carry. Wow, that is absolutely beautiful, and that is so true. And that uh, just, just that, even just that, is enough. Even in my mind, I think, oh gosh, what what do I need to pick back up and carry that, so that no one else has to carry it for me? My kids, my husband, you know, um, that is so beautiful. L let me ask you this: um, So, when did you? Um, did you go to church as a child or when did you meet the Lord or how did you, how did God find you? Yeah. So I'll, I've always been a believer. I've gone to Catholic church since, since I was a little kid. My mom took us all the time. I went through the whole Catholic system of uh, communion, catechism, went through the whole sacraments. I'm married now. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, had to get all those sacraments to be married through the Catholic church. Um, uh, despite that though, I didn't have a deep relationship with God, meaning that I was just going through the motions. You know, um, how they like to say I was a, a seasonal Catholic or something like that. I'm mm -hmm. um, just going to church during the holidays or things like that. It, it was until that rock bottom moment at Disney Disney World um, afterwards where I started to have a, a spiritual relationship, not just a church relationship with with God. Right. where he was really guiding me, where he really disclosed why he did everything for us, why he continues to do everything for us and never asked for a thing. And even the things that he asks are not for him, but mainly for us. Mm -hmm. um, I realized like, hey, all those Ten Commandments that I gave you, they're not for me. I don't want you to worship one God for, for me, for my, for my satisfaction. It's because of you, because if you don't worship just me, then you're going to worship other things. And Look at the look at the world around you, yes. where that yes. leads, where they worship money. Again, some people worship uh, pornography. Some people worship whatever ritualistically you do. That's what you worship. Yes. Um, and that's where I realized, you know what? Everything that I've laid out in the Bible and my stories, your stories, people's stories, you, you see, you see me in their lives all the time. Um, I, I do everything for you, for you, mm, for you, for yes. you, the whole way through, no matter what. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Wow. I, I mean, I thank you God for finding Moses and for Moses for you, um, you know, reaching out and listening and following and um, that he's healing you. And like you said that, uh, and it's just so such great um, advice and truth that no matter how many times you have to forgive, if it's on the daily 
just forgive and forgive and just keep forgiving and love the person as they are. I mean, that is God's, we are all God's children. We are all God created by God and um, where he, he meets us where we're at. So we need to do the same. We need to meet others yep. where they're at and love them where they're at. Um, so one of the questions before we go um, is after all that you've been through, after everything that you have been through from childhood to your first memory of the last time you saw your dad to um, the dark times, depression, um, uh, not in good health, um, pornography, um, anger, through all of that to where you are now, who would you say, who is Moses today? Who are you today? Mm. That brings up, uh, I guess, the thought of what would be in my headstone or my tombstone. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and, I, and I just hope it's something that uh, was a great father, a loving husband, and um, a giver, a server, servant of, of people. Um, mm -hmm. I want to be able to, for people to say like, man, because Moses was part of, for many years ago, no matter how small a part of, of my life, uh, just because he was part of it and he lived, my life is better. And mm. I appreciate the fact that that he did a video um, or he did this podcast and someone listening to his podcast, their whole life changed, right? I know it's, it's dramatic, but that's the hope of things. That's the only reason why I'm doing this is for that one person who needs it, for their Absolutely. life to change. And that's that's who I am now. It's someone who wants to serve, who who sees the people who need to be served, right? um mm -hmm. and it's just i want to pour out that's my purpose that's what i that's my calling again i want to be able to live on my calling i want mm -hmm. god to be able to say like thank you thank you for for living your calling for listening and for helping my children while you were there absolutely you know i have a good feeling that when you uh reach the lord and your day is has come where you go to all of our final destination. I have a good, good feeling that the Lord is going to say, Moses, well done, my good and faithful servant. Um, because of you and you reaching out and you doing this podcast and you uh, sharing your testimony of how good God is, um, I I am uh, about 1,000% confident that you will hear those, those words. And I'm <laughs> grateful that you came on and shared today um so if somebody wanted to get in touch with you um a man wanted con to connect with you first uh, tell us a little bit before before we hop off tell me a little bit about the um your business and what that's about and then how someone could get in contact with you yeah definitely so the the best way is through social media facebook instagram those, those are my main ones um, on instagram you can find me under a mentally strong man it's literally the name of the of the, the business um, okay. Similar in Facebook as well. I do have a Facebook page, but you can also add me on my personal page. It's just my name, Moises Rico, and it has my image on it as well. Uh, that will be the best way to contact me. A little bit about the business. It started off just very like just me wanting to help men. It's like, hey, dude, you want to go ahead and just talk? And um, yeah, it was just <laughs> two guys talking, uh, just being there for for my fellow. I call them clients now, right? Um, mm -hmm. But just being able to help them right now, it is since it's growing or in a growth growth journey, I am transforming a bit to be so I can be able to help multiple men at the same time. So starting with with a coach, uh, not a coaching group, but a men's group um, on Facebook for free where I can just go online on Zoom and be able to pour into men who want to join or who need it. Uh, of course, eventually going into events later on retreats. I know those those are helpful. Those were helpful for me when I, I attended one. Um, mm -hmm. and just be in an environment or create environments where men who want to grow are able to come together and like the saying goes, iron sharpens iron. Yes. And I, I want to be able to do that. Um, that's basically this whole community. What it is, is men making each other mentally strong. Absolutely. And thank God for you for offering that because, um, for whatever dumb reason, um, a lot of men were raised or uh, led to believe the myth that men don't cry and men shouldn't share 
emotions or express um, that they're hurting or that they're depressed or, you know, hey, I, I've got an anger issue or, um, and I really, and I never use this word, but I really, really despise that because men are human beings. God felt, Jesus Christ himself cried. He felt emotions. He was exposed to all the things. And um, we have been given and blessed uh, with these feelings and emotions for reason. And how dare we push them down and not feel them and learn how to process through them um, with other men? You know, what a better way to get in there and discuss with other men how they're feeling, you know, um, so I think that's so beautiful, and um, I will get your links and and put them in the in the comments for sure for people to check on. Uh, do you have any last words for any of our guests or viewers that are watching? Any last words? If if you're looking, if, if you're a fellow man, I know you've been in a position where maybe you feel lost. You don't know what to do. You've gone through many things. Maybe you tried a couple of things, right? Um, I just encourage anybody where you're a man or a woman, just try one more time and continue on trying one more time. Just don't give up one more day. And if you're looking for, for God, for Christ, all you have to do is turn around because he's holding out his hand all the time. And all you have to do is turn around, see it and grab it. And believe me, it's going to be a beautiful journey that he's going to take you on. And it's going to be magical and it's mm. beautiful as well. Absolutely. Amen. Oh my goodness, Moises. Thank you so much for coming on and for sharing and um, for doing God's work here and for doing God's work um, through your business and helping other people, um, other men. Um, it, it's so needed. And um, I thank you for joining and uh, tell your precious wife and your family, thank you for letting or thank them for um, letting me steal you for a little bit so that you could share uh, your testimony. Um Good luck on the um, the author, the Surrender to Rise Kings version, and kudos to Elena Rodriguez for putting all of that together. Um, I'm honored to have been a part of the Surrender to Rise, the Queen's version, and so I cannot wait to get my hands on that book. And so um, thank you so much, and I hope you have a blessed night, and um, my condolences and my sympathies to you and your family on the death of your father. Of course, I appreciate it very much. Thank you for having me, Tish, for allowing me to pour into your audience. Hopefully, mm -hmm. just one person, whoever listens to it, is able to get something from this and helps them in some way, shape, or form. I, I know that it will, and I appreciate you. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a blessed night and a blessed rest of your week. Night, Take night. care. Mm -hmm. All right, family and friends, thank you so much. Gosh, make sure that you share this out on your social media platforms because I know, I absolutely know. Well, Moises said that um, he hopes that it helps one person. I know that it already has. It helped me. Um, and I know that it's going to help my son. And I cannot wait for him to listen to this and watch this. He knows now that he's not alone. And that's the purpose of this podcast. So if you have a story or testimony that you want to come on and share, um, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I'm also on social media. You can email me at tross3296 at gmail. I'm happy to hear your story. And I know that um, it is needed so that other people will know that they're not alone as well. Thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, you guys have a good night, a good evening, a good afternoon, a good morning, whenever it is that you're watching. Um, I love you and I thank you so much for joining me. Bye, guys.